Okay, today what we want to do is learn how to do a lines t-test in order to calculate the uncertainty in slope and y-intercept using Excel. Now we're going to have two different methods for determining the uncertainty in the slope and the y-intercept. The first one you're going to use when your uncertainties are quite small. So if you've got small uncertainties, you're going to do this lines t-test. If you've got large uncertainties, then you can just if you've got large uncertainties, you can draw on your error bars and then approximate by eye where the maximum and minimum lines of best fit would go and base your uncertainty on those maximum and minimum lines of best fit. The reason that we want to do, do the lines t-test, well, first of all, it's very fast and easy. But secondly, if your uncertainties are small, you'll notice that the maximum and minimum lines lie pretty much right on top of the line of best fit. So it's almost impossible to draw by hand. The lines t-test is a statistical test that won't even consider how big your uncertainties are. It'll just make an estimate based on the size of the fluctuations in the data. How much does the slope fluctuate because of the fluctuations in the data? That's basically what it's doing. Now, when I used the old method, which was to consider error boxes on the first and last points and then draw a line of minimum best fit and a line of maximum best fit, the old answer that I got is this right here. Now, this is from a pendulum experiment where we're plotting the, pl the period against the square root of the length of the pendulum. That's the old answer that I got. I'm going to use the lines t-test now to look at that same data again and find out what uncertainty we get in the slope using this new method. And then later I'll make another video where I'll show you how to do this properly. So let's go to Excel now and look at that old pendulum data. Okay, here's the old pendulum data. And I was plotting the period, and this is my period, this is my y variable, against the square root of the length. That's my x variable. Now, for this method, we don't even need to know how big the uncertainties are. We just have to know that they're re relatively small, and therefore we can do a lines t-test. So what we're going to do is pick out any old cell around here. And then we're going to go to formulas. So I'm going to click in the menu bar on formulas. Come over here to insert function and click on that. And now what I'm going to do is scroll down until I find lines t. There it is lines t-test. So I click on that, click on OK, and a menu will come up. Uh, lines t is a function. We've got to put in four different parameters to let Excel know how to calculate the lines t-test. So where are the y values stored? Well, the y values are just right here. I'll highlight that and put that data in. So my y values are located between G2 and G9. And my x values, I'm going to do that the same way. So I'm going to click here on the calendar and then highlight these x values. So I've put all my data in it. It needs to know where the x's are, where are the corresponding y's. And then I've got two other quantities here. Uh, they both want logical, meaning true or false entries. And in both cases, I'm going to write true. The first true is just to say that we're going to do a linear line of best fit. And the second one just says I, I might want to look at some extra statistical quantities later. But that's all not so important. OK, so I put in that data. I click on OK, and I get this number here, 0 0.2004. Now, if I go back to my data from last year, that's just right here. That's just my slope, 0 0.2004. That's the slope of my line of best fit. And the y-intercept was 0 0.0199. So let's go back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these four boxes all together because the lines t-test actually produces several numbers, not just one number at a time. So we have to sort of define an array. Where are we going to put all those numbers? And what do those numbers mean? I'm just going to highlight four boxes here. I could pull this down farther and get more statistical quantities. And well, I'll do that. So I've got a, a few of these nonsense entries here. And that's because I haven't told Excel that I want my data put out in an array. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the formula bar up here 
now that I'm in the formula bar, what I do is simultaneously I press Shift, Control, and Enter all at the same time. If you're on a Mac, you're going to press Command, Enter. So I'm going to press Shift, Control, Enter, press that, and I get a bunch of numbers here, an array of outputs. And let's go over what each of these means. So th as I told you before, this first one here, that's just your slope. The second one here is just the y-intercept in the line of best fit. This next entry here, 0 0.004669, that's the really important one. That's your uncertainty in the slope. And this next quantity right here, that's the uncertainty in the y-intercept. So those are the quantities that are really important to us, the ones we really want to find out. Down here we get the R values and we get some other statistical quantities that aren't so important to us. So it's really just the it's really just that second row that's really important to us. Uh, so our slope was equal to 0 0.2 with an uncertainty of 0, 0.00. I'll round up to a five here. So I've got to take this out to three significant digits. So it's going to be 0 0.200 plus or minus 0 0.005. That's the value that we get. Now the old value we got was 0 0.20 plus or minus 0 0.01. So we're getting a significantly smaller uncertainty here. And in fact, that's a better value for our, uncer our uncertainty in the slope. Now, why is it a better value, this value is 0 0.005 rather than 0 0.01? It's because when we use the Lyons t-test, we're considering the fluctuations in all of the data at once. Whereas when we use the old method, we're only focusing on the first and last point. So we should get a more accurate value of our uncertainty if we use the Lyons t-test. So let's use the Lyons t-test when we've got small uncertainties. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.